Let's begin. Place your pre-prepared syringes to the side. We'll be discussing these more closely soon. Place your spore prints to the side, opening the tin foil and using it as a sterile tray. Uncover your sterile jar and open your spore print. Using the point of the X-Acto knife, scratch the spores from the print paper into the jar, being careful not to scrape the paper off. Tap frequently to free any spores sticking to the paper or to the knife. Do not touch any of the sterile equipment with anything other than another sterile piece of equipment. As you can see, this will leave a moderate stain on the paper. Consider this a loss and dispose of the remaining paper. Continue with the remaining prints using approximately two per syringe. The spore prints I'm using are the granddaughters of the spore syringe I originally purchased over the counter locally. The spore print paper I use is green because there is no such thing as a green spore. This allows me to make prints of other species of spores outside of the psilocybe family. The print paper is sterilized at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for 20 minutes before being used for printing. It's stored in tin foil until that such time. The syringes used here were purchased sterile from a local pharmacy. Distilled water, boiled for 20 minutes in an uncovered pot, is drawn into the syringe, ejected, and drawn into the syringe again, then let stand until cool. This usually takes approximately 24 hours at room temperature. Don't disregard the total power of hot water in a syringe. As you can see, the work area is not completely sterile, but all equipment that is in it is. The paper is sterilized at 400 degrees Fahrenheit before use. The X-Acto blade, jar, and tinfoil are all sterilized both with alcohol and by 400 degree Fahrenheit pasteurization prior to use. The physical area doesn't actually need to be sterilized as any ambient draft will more than easily carry away any, any spore or fungus infection that may develop.
The result is a pile of black purple powder at the bottom of the jar. This is your actual spore material which is used to inoculate your jars to produce mycelium mass and in the end mushroom fruit. Eject the syringes into the jar to break up the spores. Do not touch at any time the needle with your hands or any other piece of unsterile equipment. If this should happen, you will have to flame and sterilize the tip or replace the needle. Draw the spore solution up into a syringe and eject a stream down the sides of the jar. This is to harvest any additional spores that have adhered there. Fill each syringe to capacity with the spore solution. Replace the caps and store on their sides to prevent the spores from collecting at either end. Placing a small bubble within the syringe often aids in the cursory stirring of latent syringes if left to sit longer than 72 hours. The syringes must sit for at least 12 to 24 hours for many spores to rehydrate. Note the darkened color of the solution. Only a small fraction of this is actually required for mycelial mass to form. Many spore solutions are actually one spore print to 50 such syringes. When filling the last syringe, Ensure that you use the last syringe's contents to wash down the sides and again to harvest any additional spores that may have been left behind. Store the spores and the spore prints as well with the syringes to ensure that you are fully documented in this which the syringes have which spores. Documented records are a must if you wish to correct further mistakes later on. There you have it, making your own spore syringes in 10 minutes.